I actually saw two fascinating films. I, I was overwhelmed by how good they actually were. I didn't expect uh, both of them to be the stellar. Uh, the first one was um, Teenage Emotions, and it, it has a really interesting backstory. The, the filmmaker, it was actually a, the protege of James Ivory, and I think he appeared in one of his films like from like the late 90s. Um, it was uh, A Soldier's Daughter Never Cries. And since then, he's made a couple of shorts here and there, but he hasn't really been like deep inside the deep in the film industry. And now he uh, he's a teacher at a school somewhere in California. And during lunch breaks, he basically filmed his students on a cell phone and pieced it together into this narrative feature. And so it has this like really pseudo documentary look, but um, it, it imbues it with that realism that 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 other films of the similar ilk don't possess and at first it's actually kind of jarring when i first started watching i was like i don't know if i can get into this it's super pixelated like the imagery like it wouldn't have passed a qc test like i used to work as a distributor and all films have to pass a qc test in order to get on vod platforms so i'm like this will never pass it like there's pixels like dead pixels everywhere but then it's incredible how fast you get over that within the first like 30 seconds i would say it sucked me into the story and then it's sort of serve the the visual grittiness and the griminess i don't know how else to explain it uh describe it but it served the story because you, it, it, it really thrust you right there into the middle of those teenage emotions and what they're going through and i think it's a very important film actually and i hope that it has as many eyes laid on it as possible because it gives provides insight real insight into what gen z is all about and i'm like I'm 1983, so I don't know. I'm a millennial or post millennial. I don't even know what what. I, but I don't understand kids these days. I don't understand music. I'm so detached from what's going on in <laughs> pop culture, apart from film. So the and and especially, I have a daughter, a two year old daughter. So like it fascinates me, and I need to get start getting into it. So this film is sort of provides a good entrance point to understanding the mentality be behind the social media driven generation that that's currently. You know abundant everywhere and they're they're beautiful yeah. kids they're really emotional beautiful kids so yeah i, I saw yeah. i saw the film as well and um i have a tween daughter a teen daughter I should, she's mm -hmm. graduated to teen and i swear it's it's like watching her hang out with her friends it's uh, incredible. <laughs> like, yeah, the realism she really nailed it it is it's real. it's too real <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so too give real. us give us an idea of what what the kids are talking about Oh, well, I, 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 first of all, like they were completely uh, not cognizant of the fact that the cameras, maybe because- Yeah, that's the most there. amazing thing is like there's being super honest. and Super uh, honest. Like yeah. it's like, uh, it was like a documentary as if the camera wasn't even there. And they were talking to each other about anything from, you know, liking a boy, one of the girls hooked up with a boy and uh, who, was, who was 18. So he basically hooked up with a minor and she doesn't understand because she's so young that it could potentially ruin his entire life. He doesn't understand because he's so young that it could potentially ruin her entire future, what he's done. That's a very interesting kind of thread uh, because, you know, hormones are raging when you're at that age and, and you don't really necessarily think about the things that we think about as adults. Um, I mean, one of the, the most, I think the, the girl that stuck out to me the most was the, I, I forget her name, but the, she was one of the protagonists and she always ends up being stuck in a friend zone, which I thought was strange because she's, she's a very like good looking young girl and, uh, very charming and smart and, and she's just, you know, and, and then she has her popular friend who's, who freely admits that she's vacuous. And she's very proud of it too. She's like, you know, I don't need to be smart because I got this. She's like, this is what attracts guys, you know? And then the rest kind of comes with the territory and 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 their dichotomy between them and, and their dialogue because they're so brutally honest with each other. And they're not like, when I was in school, people like bashed each other. It was like a war zone. You had to like really get through <laughs> and, and come out on the other end, you know, a winner. But here, I love how just honest, and like judgmental, but in a not judgmental way, I wrote in my review, like the kids are with each other. They're like straight up telling each other, like, yeah, you're, you're vacuous. Like there's nothing going on between your ears, but you know what? It works for you. And she's like, yeah, well, you're ugly, <laughs> you know? And like, it's incredible. Nobody's offended or anything like that. They're just kind of, all right, cool. Let's move on. You know? So yeah. I just love that, the, the dynamics between the kids. Yeah. It tells you something about this generation when they know what the word vacuous means. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> 